Inside the Cave now brings you the official store to get all things Cave Crush and Inside the Cave at CaveCrushShop.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Cave Crush and like our Facebook page, Cave Crush Shop. Turn that up a little. Yeah, like that. Enough of the bullshit. It's time to go inside the cave with CB, Joe Dirt, Big Dog, Sid, Cousin Lamar, International D and Cat, and Belly Bell featuring Roland, Charles Hurt, and now introducing Sly. Coming down. Boy. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, here we go. Welcome back inside the cave, inside the cave podcast.com, cavecrushshop.com. Go to both of those places right now. Thank you to everybody listening to our show last week and the feedback. One day we will get to it. All right, thank you though. Really do appreciate it checking in, especially all the new listeners. I tell you, you know, one thing about it, it's one thing to have people that you know listen to the show, but when you have people that you have no who, clue who they are, like, for instance, there's some people listening in, in what was this, I, I'll figure it out, but send us some feedback, I want to know how you found us, and if you haven't checked in, just let us know how you found us, and what you like about the show, what you don't like about the show. Really appreciate it. I I am CB at I'm the real CB. We got a lot to talk about. My buddy Jay Davis is calling in today. Next to me always is a uh, country rap tune, the Southern baby, Big Dog. What's up with it, man? What's up with it, man? All right. Uh, Slick Rick says, uh, I want to know how them pills, the me and you try them pills together. <laughs> I knew that was coming, man. Hey, uh, Slick Rick been awfully quiet for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Now he want to come with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, man, shout out to Slick Rick, man. He don't fuck <laughs> with us no more, man. What's up with that? Also with us today, man, got the question of the day. Ladies, let's talk about a new shirt from CraveCrushShop.com. What it do, what it do, what it do. Happy holidays to everybody. What's going on in the cave? Hey, and also, uh, the Cleese Report podcast available on iTunes and on Google Play Store. If you want to hear some good Obama, Obama bashing, uh, check out this week's past episode. We're rolling on the Cleese Report. Damn, I was, I was bashing Obama? No, but your guest was. <laughs> <laughs> I listen, I like, man. Yeah, I, I, I normally remember all my Obama bashing. Uh, I listen, man. I listen. I listen. I will be talking about that probably and kill yourself and start over. <laughs> so. hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How the hell are you going to give my fucking guest a kill yourself? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it sounds like he just never. Hey, so uh, everybody, if you're listening, go to uh, the Cleese Report podcast after you get done listening to this episode and check out Roland's show. It really is a good show. You know, it's much different from this show, and uh, check it out. It's available for Android users and iPhone on the uh, Apple podcast. Go check it out. Leave them some feedback as well. All right, uh, before we get started, I do want to give a PSA from Inside the Cave. This is a public service announcement from inside the cave. And that is for all the cheating men. You got about two or three more weeks to cheat. Do not bring your cheating ways into 2018 because there's no guarantee that she's going to put up with it in 2018. All right, 2017 is the year to cheat on your woman and get away with it because there's a precedent already set up for her to take you back. All the women are taking their men's back for cheating. Don't bring your cheating ways into 2018. If by December 31st you haven't got caught on cheating, just admit to it. So then you guys got something to build on in 2018. And that is a PSA from Inside the Cave. Yeah! This PSA was brought to you by Inside the Cave. 
Correction. Correction. <laughs> That's a PSA from CB at I'm the real CB. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Appreciate that, brother. Yeah, oh. we, we here at Inside the Cave do not sanction that foolishness he just said. Every hey. time I try to say something, you guys disagree. I, I, somebody has to be here for the cheating man. I, I, somebody has to look out for them. You know, they they deserve to have love, too. So I just figure somebody has to be there for them. Hell, that's what's wrong with them now. They're getting too much love. <laughs> <laughs> and, they pro- and, and according to CB, they probably ain't paying for it, neither. <laughs> yeah, they're paying, they paying for it up front, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all right like i said we got my buddy jay davis calling in uh uh later on in the show all right let's get into this uh you got 30 seconds the first segment it's time for the warm-up the a block let's work it out you got 30 seconds on inside the cave no man, no man. i know what's on your brain you probably hope it never would have all right no cat no lamar so I'm going straight to Sly. Uh, Sly, you heard about Colin Kaepernick. Uh, he received the Muhammad Ali Award from Beyonce. Yeah. Uh, you heard about that? I heard about that. Just heard about that. Now, the, uh, the main takeaway from that uh, award show was uh, Beyonce's little black dress. And, man, did she look good in that little black dress. Did you see that picture? Yes, I did. Uh, so, Sly, since we got the new Facebook group, I dare you. <laughs> I double dog, triple dog dare you. Name three women from the Facebook group who will look good in that Beyonce dress. Your clock starts right now. Mm. I dare you. Uh, um, a triathlete, Dominique. Um, who else is in the group? Uh, um, Can- Candace. Candice, I believe her name is, and probably Michelle. No, okay, cool, cool, cool. Shout out to those three girls. What about the rest of them? You saying they ain't gonna look good in that dress? You only gave me three. You only gave me three. You only gave me three. <laughs> yeah, gave me three. In no particular order. No right. particular order. You know what I mean? Most of the names that you had gave me to for you anyway, so I'm just doing what you said. <laughs> Uh, you can't prove that. We only do facts on this show. All right, Big Dog, Big Dog. Here you go, because Big Dog doesn't like to participate, so I give Big Dog the easy ones. All right, Big Dog. Uh, seven years ago this week, uh, The Breakfast Club, the number one morning show in America, period, uh, uh, made their debut. Uh, you heard about that, right? I've never heard of the Breakfast Club. Never heard of Breakfast Club. Well, <laughs> that, that right there, for everybody who's listening that don't know, I have no problem talking about it. That is, that is where you want to be in life. If you if you're doing this, that is that is that is like podcast goals. That is radio goals. Hey 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 hey, hey CB, hold on hold on hold on. Turn it down, dog. Now it down. now, didn't the homie Slick Rick get on your ass about promoting Sorry, other people's shit? Not- Doing all time, you can't promote somebody that's number one. <laughs> there's nothing. I, there's nothing I can do for them. Right? Those are facts. I mean, that's like when you. It's not a fact. When you get to the Breakfast Club level, there's no, there's nowhere else to go in in, in radio. Like after mm. after you do that gig, there's nowhere else to go. That's oh, it. Okay. That's it. So, but anyway, you got thirty seconds to name the three hosts of the Breakfast Club. I'm protesting. I never heard of them. No. <laughs> I've heard of a podcast um, inside the cave. See what I deal with, folks. Uh, got the homie Sly. Got the Cleese Report. Yeah. Yours truly. Wouldn't be no show without us. See what I deal with. All right. Okay. And that was Dog doing this. All right. Oh, oh yeah. We do have some guy that. Um, you know, kind of host occasionally. Yeah, he's a damn. Uh, what, what's the name? Um, Roland is is it Corky? Uh, he's the man. He's the uh, man. CB at I'm the real CB. Oh yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes, a... sometimes the cast refers to him as God with a lowercase G. That's the guy you're talking about. God, please don't let me fuck up the CB. <laughs> yeah. In other news, Roland, you got 30 seconds. Uh, LeVar Ball took his son out of UCLA 
You heard about that big fiasco oh, this I week? Def- I definitely heard about that. Uh, so many which so many different ways I was gonna go with this. But uh Roland, you got thirty seconds to name three NBA players who continued their career overseas. Your clock starts now. Damn, I know one definitely, Stephon Marbury. Damn, I really can't think of no other. I don't think my mood Raul finished over there. Okay, that played overseas, period. That played overseas as an American? No, I'm stumped. Go ahead, just anybody else? I know Stephon Marbury is, about, is my hero because he went over there and won three championships. Yeah, Iverson played over there for a couple seasons. Oh, he did? Yeah. yeah I didn't even know that. See, Tracy, we, need, we need seasonal sad on. He know all that. Tracy type. McGrady, Kenya Martin. Kenya Martin, Tracy McGrady, uh, J.R. Smith. They're in a lockout. Yeah. Shut up. See? I want to say D, D. Brown. I want to say D. Brown. Ooh, you stomped me on that one. D. Brown. Haven't heard Brown, that name. Me? Haven't heard now, that The most name. thing I remember about D. Brown is when he did the dunk and he hit, hit his ass. That was dope. No, that's a different D. Brown. That's a different D. Brown. I'm talking about the D. Brown that came out of um, Chicago. Uh, oh, cool. I got you. Nah, you talking about that D. Brown. Oh, damn, boy. <laughs> He about to take Sad's job, huh, CB? He, he ended up playing for what? He he got he played for Utah and then he he was in and out of the NBA. Yeah. Now he coached coach UIC. He assistant coach for UIC now. Damn boy. Woo. Oh, you went back. Man, that's crazy. All right. Go ahead, Sly. <laughs> Go ahead, Sly. I see you, man. <laughs> what, what, what I what I what what's the question? No, nah, no, nah, I see you, man. It's like, shit, you you went there on that one. Uh, that one. Hey, CB. <laughs> that was a CB. Yeah. I officially nominate Sly for the new ESPN uh, segment. Uh, <laughs> we're not we're not allowed to talk about that, Roller. Remember. <laughs> All right. Damn. <laughs> That was that was this week's condensed version of <laughs> You Got 30 Seconds. That's what you on, bro. I don't know what y'all did, man. That's what you on, man? Hey, listen, I'm just saying. All right. God damn. I'm just saying. Okay, let's go. Into- you on, bro. All right, let's get into this. Uh, around the Cave. Uninterrupted, undisputed, and unedited. It's time to go Around the Cave. All right, Roland, what you got this week? <clears throat> since since you gave, uh, you you actually was really in line with, uh, um, you know what I was thinking today. I was on one today, as far as the Levar Ball situation, and <clears throat> he because of his mouth and his antics, a lot of people can criticize uh, what he's doing, what he did. You can call, you know, you could so. Uh, you can analyze him pulling his kids out of you know high school basketball and college basketball to your heart's content. But one thing I'll say is, is we as black men need to be careful who we criticize. I tend to lean towards the size that the man might be an evil genius because That's okay. what is on this show on this show cb i believe is the one who said it first is that uh lonzo ball probably has no business even being in the nba let alone be the second pick so he tricked us into doing that and then what he might do is it's like i said earlier about stefan marbury he can go to the china league and wreak havoc them other two boys so Let's not be so quick to criticize him on his decisions because we're in this box of have to do it a certain way. There's many of players like we just named that go overseas and make money. Um, I believe that they're tricking us in the funneling talent and free labor into the NCAA for football and basketball. And them is like we just mentioned, are the two most predominantly black sports. No other sports operates that way where you have to go to uh, to college. And on top of that, all the um, foreigners, they go straight from high school 
and they they do have a basketball system that's similar to college but it's your you go to school for basketball it's basketball school so to speak so let's stop being so hypercritical the way that man's raising his kids and what i find very interesting and i'm not trying to point no fingers but i'm willing to bet that a lot of the men that's sitting there being hypercritical of uh lavar ball don't even raise their own damn kids so why yeah. do that is a great point. You know, I agree with you on that. I think yeah, it's man, I, I, I like what he's doing. Honestly, you know, at first I was a little, you know, I was like, 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 what the fuck is he on? You know what I'm saying? And then after I started really following the story, man, I think, uh, I think he owned this something. Well, here, here's the thing, dog, is that whether whether it's all an act or it's really his personality, all that fuck shit, it actually sells in 2017. Like that's the way you that marketing media marketing that's how you take advantage and that's why I call him an evil genius is because he's using their shit against them and that's yeah. why they're fucking mad because he goes waves his arms talks all this shit and what happened they actually listen it's always been a rule but they had to re bring up a rule about so they can stop interviewing Levar Ball. <laughs> So all the media outlets constantly want to stick a microphone in this dude's face. I think it's I think he's a genius. Exactly. To pull that off. This guy, this guy had a plan and he's he's accomplishing a lot of things that a lot of the fathers wish they could accomplish. How about his kid? Other than listen, my I had a great dad, I had a great mom, I had a decent, stable life. I mean, I didn't grow up rich, but I definitely didn't really want for a whole lot. I had a pocket full of money when I was 12, 13 years old and went up to the store and tried to steal a car, a little, you know, matchbox car or whatever, and got caught. So you can have the greatest parents in the world, man. That's still in thing. That's a blip on the radar. That's shit. That's a, that's a child mistake. Yeah. He's a, you know, 18, 19 years old, but at the end of the day, he made a mistake. You can't necessarily put that. Oh, he's a bad man. Listen, the dude ain't selling drugs. He ain't knocking people in the head. He made three athletes, legitimate athletes, regardless if they all go pro or not. They they come up well to do, and that's an accomplishment. Especially, I don't care if he got a white <clears throat> wife, but for a black father, man, that's an accomplishment, man. Because that's all we do is get kicked and criticized, and we leave our women and all of this other stuff. And there's great dads out there. Especially some of the guys on this show are man, tremendous even, dads. And even we don't if, give no credit. Even if his son is a bust, as a lot of people want to criticize his kid before he even have a chance to to kind of come into his own, he still accomplished something that a lot of us wish we could accomplish. Absolutely. A lot, a lot of dads wish their sons could accomplish. I'm, I'm willing to bet you any father that you go to right now, their son is playing sports, would trade places if they had the opportunity to get their son into professional sports. Absolutely. They wouldn't. That criticism that that this man is getting, hey man, that shit gonna go away sooner or later. I'm gonna do you one better, dog. I had somebody, I had somebody comment on my post today, who 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 basically poured out his heart saying. I didn't have my dad in my life. I would love to have a dad like LeVar. That shit damn near brought a tear to my eye, man. Cause I had my dad in my life. My wife talks about it all the time. She was like, that's why a lot of these dudes are so damn soft. That's why they, they, they act the way they act. Cause they didn't get raised by a father. And that's probably why we so hard. I don't know. I, I, all you guys have y'all dad in your life? I know I did. You know, yeah. I had, my dad was an OG too, so. I really got, I got it on both ends. And then, he, then when I got older, he ended up going to the God side. He got out of jail, turned his life around. So then he gave it to me on that end. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I've always had my dad in my life. So I don't know, man. I, I just think that as men, I'm just talking to the men. And I'm and I'm talking to the black, they, listen, the, 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 the critics on ESPN or Fox, they can criticize to they blue in the face. I don't give a damn about them. But us regular people, if we sitting there passing judgment on this man, we need to look in the mirror. Cause I just think that's, I think that's being overcritical on some shit that, um, because we don't agree with the way he's doing something. 
All, All I right, know is Slam. whatever he's doing is working. <laughs> All right, Slam, what you got this week, man? With the ball out off the two fellas off off dog and on row, um, I agree. Dude is dude is a sick genius. Uh, <laughs> he's a sick genius. Uh, I I thought he was a genius with the marketing scheme when he didn't have his son signed to Nike and had him wearing all different shoes during the summer league. I seen what he was on and I I thought they was going to sign his son to like a ten day uh, contract for Nike or something like that for thousands of dollars where he would w- promise to wear the shoe for ten games and Under Armour would do the same thing ten games and, and so on and so forth so this kid would be able to wear five different brands of shoes at any time during the season and get paid by five different companies because he didn't commit to not one of them um, that man. The dude father's eye with me. He's a little bit over the top sometimes, but <laughs> right. people paying attention to him. And, and not just people, companies are paying attention to him. And and they're gonna make money either off of him, with him, or or for him. So so I'm with dude. I'm I'm with dude. Uh, uh my 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 other rant would be uh de- definitely on um, politics. I, I'm I'm uh, I'm watching this on um, the, the Republicans back back um, dog back your back your buddy for senator down there, uh, and I just can't see how these grown men are saying it's cool to be a pedophile or a slash rapist or assault women and girls, and we're gonna put you in the U.S. Senate. And I, I saw a sign across social media that said. Um, uh, Jesus, Jesus was falsely accused too. Vote, vote for Roy Moore. What? I mean, yes, yes, yes. It was like on a like on a church marquee sign that you you would see out outside of a church in the parking lot that would normally read a passage out of the Bible. Yes, I seen I seen this come across social media. Dog, get your people together down there, hey, man. It's not my people, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that shit straight right now. Um, Dog man, come come on up to the shot here, man. We could use you up here. Man, y'all killing each other in the shot. Hey, well, you be you gonna be all right. I know it. I know it. Uh, at a boy slide. I'm gonna make mine real simple. Uh, a lady always told me, CB, don't worry about it. People are listening to you, and they not even tell you telling you that they're listening to you. So don't even worry about it. And I didn't believe her, but I'm listening to a couple other shows over the past couple of weeks. I'm like, you know what? You're right. So uh, this could have been kill yourself and start over. But I'm just going to make it a quick rant. Uh, all you guys using my catchphrases that I actually ripped off from my kids. Like you guys, you guys look at least like when I first when we first started the show. I was always saying uh, the Seinfeld line of not that there's anything wrong with that. And me and Veli always gave Seinfeld the credit. That was a sign that was ripped off straight from Seinfeld. I, I, I used to watch Seinfeld. You, I know what you're talking about. You can't prove that is me. You who said that is me. You know why it's me? Because I took it from my kids. This is arguments that I have with my kids when they do something wrong. They always say, well, who did that? Who said that? Who did that? Who You can't, uh, it wasn't me. Look, if you're going to use my stuff, and I know it's my stuff because I remember when I started saying it, at least give me the credit for it. Give me the credit. All right? Don't, and don't do it for me. Do it for my kids. All right? They deserve better for that. Give me the credit so I can give give my kids their credit. All right? That's all I want to say. Yeah, I, mean, I heard somebody I heard somebody say on another podcast which I'm not going to promote you can't prove that oh whoa 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 I actually went and bought that URL already I bought that I said wait I mean, I'm keeping that that's mine hey you know what I'm saying? And for then, real you got that and then I heard someone say who said that I'm like hey hey wait a minute my, my Cameron does that my son says that those are his lines so hey don't steal my shit, man. If you're gonna use it, I know there's nothing original. I know there's nothing original in entertainment, but Jesus Christ, if you're gonna use it, just say, "Hey, we got it from this guy from inside the cave." I pay homage to Seinfeld. You can at least pay homage to me. Oh, 
And that's Around the Cave this week. Thought-provoking ignorance with special guests and Cave Crush interviews. Inside the Cave. Now that's how you podcast. Inside the Cave. Are, are you enjoying this episode of Inside the Cave? Well, get your ass up and rate us on iTunes. Inside the Cave Podcast. Five stars or kill yourself and start over. Get, get, get the latest in cave fashion at CaveCrushShop.com. That's CaveCrushShop.com. Follow Inside the Cave on Instagram at Inside the Cave and at Cave Crush for the hottest women on the planet. Like Inside the Cave on Facebook, Inside the Cave Podcast, and follow Inside the Cave on Twitter at Cave Crush. Inside the Cave. Thought provoking ignorant guy talk with special guests and Cave Crush interviews. See something effed up? Talk your shit. Kill yourself and start over on Inside the Cave. All right, let's get right into it real quick. Jay Davis is coming up in about a little while, so let's get into this. Kill yourself and start over. Uh, I know you guys probably got some deep shit, huh? So, I'm, a little, I'm a little wore out from around, uh, around the cave. Yeah, around, around the cave was kind of serious, man. But uh, Yeah, around hey, the man, cave you know what, though? Yeah. I, got, I got some... Um, uh, it was some. What's that song by Ace? I mean, by um, it's Ace Yeah, the one that true. he did the remix from um, Three Six Mafia. What's the name of that track? Oh no, I don't know. Never mind. You know what I'm talking about, Roland? No, nah, I'm lost. Ace Ferdy? Yeah, he got this this single that's out. What? 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 what the the new level? Going. Nah, it's, it's the latest one. Uh... I can't think of the name, but anyway, I know, I know what song know he's talking, talking, talking about, about too. What about I it? What about? I can't think of the hook. Well, anyway, <clears throat> there's some some 13 year olds out here that's riding around playing this. Um, they was playing the original version from Three Six. Slob, slob on you, my knob. Yeah, but but what's the ASAP verb? Uh, I don't know what his, but I found what you was talking about. The, the slob on my knob. You looking yeah. for the title of theirs? Yeah, yeah. I can't think of ASAP Ferb shit. Man, I don't want. I don't want to be saying it inside the cave like this. But does the hook go <laughs> something like like suck a nigga dick or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah that one. Oh that one, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, you just listen. <laughs> Plain Jane. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Plain Jane. That's it. I didn't even realize. <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? I said, like, what the fuck is this shit? Yeah, plain like, dream. And the kids going around saying, like, what? 13 years old, bro. Yeah. And, and what was funny, uh, I was I was cracking on my daughter about, about it. I'm like, what, what the hell y'all listen to now? And I stopped at the gas station the next day, right? And this group of teenage boys pulled up. that They had to just start driving. And guess what they playing? What? Three six. The old one. The the original with the windows down, loud. And CB, you know where I stay at. Yep. So I got to give all their asses kill yourself and start over. Yeah, I'm thinking I, about I, getting my daughter kill yourself and start over too for knowing about it. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. I want to hear that shit. Man, not over there, man. I feel you. On she that, said they were playing the shit on the, hey, on the bus, go. bro. On the bus, on their cell phone. Man, you can't do that, man. This is different now. Access now, man. Right. Killing me, man. Uh, since we're talking about music, uh, I do want to give FM Radio a kill yourself and start over. Uh, I am look. I am so sick of hearing Christmas music. It is too early for that shit. I understand that it, it's the holiday season. But what makes you think that at V103, come on, man, GCI does it too. What makes you think we want to hear all this damn Christmas music, the Temptations, the, the James Brown, Santa Claus goes straight to? What makes you think we, and it's not just FM Ray, but what makes you guys think that 
right after Thanksgiving, you got to play nothing but Christmas music all the way until New Year's. That is the who the program director that came up with that idea. Uh, go back to the 1980s and do your homework. Like nobody's come on, man. We got too much. You got too many ways to listen to music for you just to flood FM radio with Christmas music. All I mean, every other song. Like, kill yourself and start over. Nobody want to hear that shit. They're trying to get you in the mood to spend some of that money. That, that's not getting me in the mood. That's not getting me in the mood. It's pissing me off. Like, seriously. Like, damn. Yeah, I, I'm with you, CB. They, they need to own, uh, those HD channels on their sister channel or whatever. Hey, you want to send, you want to hear Christmas music? Switch over to our sister station or right. our HD station. And you got Christmas 24 hours a day over there. But we're going to keep playing the hits on this station. That don't make no sense to me. <laughs> and also, I want to give myself a kill yourself and start over. I don't pretend to be uh, like I know anything about cars, I, uh, <laughs> but I do know how to jump a car. And I had to get my buddy a jump this uh, afternoon, and I couldn't find a battery on my car. Neither one, <laughs> actually, neither one of us could. We sitting around there looking like two bitches, like, "Hey man, where, you, where your battery at?" I said, "God damn, the motherfucker was over here." But really, I need the detail underneath my hood. But I couldn't find the battery for nothing. We over what there. Type of car you got? What type of car? Hey, you, you know what, CP? What? I'm gonna give you key yourself and start over to. <laughs> hey, hey, we got. I know you work it. Hey, and you need your ass. Work. That's what. That's what even worse because we was in the parking lot at the job, and we both, <laughs> and we both looking underneath the hood like, hey man, this ain't your battery, and we hooked the damn thing up to the fuse box and shut. Whoa, 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 that ain't it. And I said, well, damn. What the fuck? Hey, <laughs> the- they rolling. Just hit and they be on the bottom. Man, they rolling. Yeah. CB the guy to get the whatchamacallit out the box and, and tighten it down with the what's the name? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's pretty yeah, good. Get you, give me that whatchamacallit. Hey, give me that whatchamacallit so I can put it into the what's the name. <laughs> the way they got the cars now, man, the, the battery be covered up by so much stuff because they make them a little compact and you just got a ground, you got a ground to ground jumper cable and then you usually have a jumper post yeah, for the positive. Yeah. Yeah, she clear as day though. I know. Well, we we grounded it to something. I don't know what we grounded it to, but we grounded it to something. Did you get his car started? The, the car did start right away. Well, who gives a fuck how you did it? <laughs> <laughs> this time, CB, you know, just so you know, the battery could be in the floor. Yeah. On the passenger side, second row, or it could be in the trunk. Yeah, yeah. Chrysler was in the trunk. Chrysler, like a Chrysler. Nah, it's, 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 but you can't jump it off under the hood. It ain't that. Just so you know, it ain't that new of a car. I mean, it's a 2012, I believe. So, see, they've been doing this shit for a while, bro. But I, I, I can't believe. It. I'm like, this, this ain't my first time underneath this hood. But me and him both couldn't find that motherfucker for nothing. So y'all, y'all had four eyes looking for two batteries. One battery couldn't find it. It took us a while. We found it. We hooked it up to Sunday. You know what? His ass need to be stranded. Yeah. You don't know where the fuck we both, we both found it eventually. But, uh, and then last but not least, I do want to give uh, a reset and start over to to uh, the Cleese Report podcast. Now, here's the reason why. Stephen A. Smith, who's someone, <laughs> someone who I don't like to quote, but he said that when black people get a job, they don't just ha- get a job. They get a responsibility. And their responsibility is to the black community. And he, he is right. And President Obama is even more proof of that. Now, I know that it's crazy to me because white people have a problem with President Obama. Said he was too racist. Black people say Obama wasn't black enough believe it or not latinos don't think he went far enough and gay people don't think he went far enough so i'm like okay all these all these different groups women have a problem you might want to make little cheap things out of all these people want to make little quick sly remarks about obama and stuff like that and okay that's it to teach his own that's how you feel but why we put more pressure on him than any other president. He took the job as a president. And if you just look at the numbers of what he did, he, in the past 20, 30 years, he was better than all his predecessors. 
And True. it's in our own community is the ones that complain about him the most. And, and, and it's just amazing to me. Now, I'm not, I, don't get me wrong. Mel, what's this guy's name? Melly Mel. He was right. The guy in Roller Interview, he was right. We did get comfortable when Obama got in. Yeah, no, Remy. Well, Remy, was, Red. Remy Red. I'm sorry. I, I'm on, I apologize. I didn't, I, I'll edit that real talk. He, he's right. We did get comfortable when Obama came in. But everything ain't no Obama problem to me. And I just think that at some point, and I, I fall victim to what I do to LeBron James. At some point, you got to just be like, let's respect what he has done. We can nitpick on little shit. But we got to respect what that man did. I remember, I'm old enough to remember 2008, bro. It wasn't pretty. All right? It wasn't pretty. I had max credit cards, laid off from work, not knowing what was going to happen and stuff like that. Big Dog was there. We all was there. That man fixed that shit. All right? That man fixed that shit. His policies fixed that shit. You can, you can personally not like him or whatever. That man policies fix that shit. It's facts. That's it, Big. That's it. That's it, bro. That's all I got to say about it. I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that. But <laughs> hey, for, but for all our listeners, if you want to know what I'm talking about, go listen to the Cleese Report podcast. It's available. I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Roller don't like that shit. <laughs> I know Rose don't like that shit. All right, who, what you got? Uh, what you got, Sly? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to sports. I'm gonna get away from politics. I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna go to sports. And my kill yourself start over. I could have went to to the rival of the Steelers and the Bengals. I could have went to um, um, Boogie and KD. But oh, my kill yourself yeah. is gonna be for Gronk. Gronk. Is tripping. He, yeah, he definitely um, needs to kill himself. Reset, reset, and start over. Reset and start over. That was that was a low down, dirty hit. I can't even figure out why you did that, other than somebody told you to go do that. Right. That was a man. <laughs> really, like he, like he could, like he really could have paralyzed that man. And they say they say Gronk is um. Auditioning to be in WWE. Yeah, I heard, yeah, I heard that. that real, too. real talk. They say he's already yeah. in talks. But yeah. see, but see, how did? Why does he get that excuse? If it was some, if it was a black guy, they would have just said he was a thug. You know why I does? Mean, why does he get that excuse? What's the one kid that used to be uh, on um, on Dallas? Dallas had him for a cornerback as for a while. Then he went to Cincinnati. He was always in trouble. Done. Pac-Man, what's the name? Pac-Man Jones. Yeah. Adam Jones. Adam Jones. Adam Jones. Yeah. Come on, man. They never gave him. They never. He was. He really did become a wrestler. You know what I mean? He really did become a wrestler. No, but they never. They never gave him no excuse for the reason why he acted out. And he really did. He wrestled in TNA. Yeah, yeah that that Gronk hit, man. I mean, you couldn't get play dead, man, all the way out of bounds. <laughs> oh man, like dude, they ended up with a concussion, right? That's what I'm saying. The nerves is man, that was that was some dirty shit, man. And only get one game. Yeah, he I, think I, I, I think he should have been out however long that guy's out, he should be out. He should have been out at least to the playoffs, man. There's only three more. He's he appealing the game. He appealing the one game. Right. Yeah, I couldn't yeah, believe it, that. He's got denied though. Yeah, but the nerve and you trying to appeal it. It just makes no sense. I, well, on, on that side, I think it's just the union. I think it just be a formality that they appeal yeah, every. They don't appeal anything, regardless. But one yeah. game, you know, that's that's crazy. Man, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. That's my my reset and start over. Yeah, that, that, yeah. I, I like him as a player, man. He got some good hands. But that was just. Too much, right? That that was just too damn much. Uncalled. Hey, 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 it's like, and hey, don't leave out um, 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 um Tom Brady. No, what? Oh. Now, what Tom Brady do? Tom Brady tried to justify what he was doing. His ass need a reset oh, and start man. over too. Oh, you trying to justify <laughs> it? Yeah, yeah. Right. 
And at the same mm-hmm. time, you know, he was over there arguing with the coach, and they just had like, you know, they're just braiding, being competitive. Oh, yeah. you know, man, I, 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 you know, I expected, I expected that shit to happen. How them, how that came about. You know, they that's, that, that's that white privilege they're talking about. Yeah, they, yeah, they say that, that that's that that's that craft and Trump team, man. You know, ain't too much for it to happen to them at all. But that that whole Steelers Bengal debacle, they all over that. They all over that. Oh yeah, yeah. And they, but why would they give them the same amount of time as you know uh, as Gronk? Why why would why would you make that be like it's the same violation and it's not? And that's and then those was, those were football plays during during but during the whistle like before the whistle was blown. Those are actual football plays before the whistle was blown. Gronk Gronk's hit yeah. after the whistle play is dead. The man is trying to get up. Out of bounds. He's trying to get back up. Right. Terrible. Terrible. Roland, uh, Roland, you did you say did you get one already? No, I ain't get one. Okay. What you got this week? All right. I think I'm gonna give mine to the doctors over at the Cleveland Clinic for for mm-hmm. transplanting that uterus in that woman so she could have a baby. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't just drop something like that without explaining it. What are you talking about? I ain't heard it before. What the hell, what the hell are you talking about? Just drop, just drop the uterus like it's a transmission in, in somebody. <laughs> first, first woman with a uterus transplant looks forward to pregnancy. It's the first successful they put a new uterus from a from a dead person into a 26 year old woman. Damn. Uh, uh, do that do that fall under the organs act or something? You know, like donation? Is that an organ? They, well, listen. Whether it is or it isn't, they got one. And 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 if you listen, start listening to the Cleese report and slide up on that IG page, you'll you'll know about these organ tran, uh, organs on the illegal uh, black market. But that's a whole nother conversation. We don't. It's a uterus. It's a uterus. It's a goddamn uterus. Yeah. Well, yeah, they got yeah, yeah, out the wild. They gonna be doing that shit in these sex change operations. Like that. Can I get there? Can I get there? Can no, I get there? No, you can't get there. No, no. I stole your shit, Roland. <laughs> no, you can't Take it too motherfucking long. I'm, I'm glad dog said so. No, you can't go there, Roland. No. <laughs> well, that's what that's what it's leading to. That listen, I, I didn't done a little bit of research on this, man. That's why I'm giving them a kill yourself and start over. It's a highly um dangerous procedure. Um, it was successful in this woman, but it can be done in men. So every single man who has had a baby, um, you have to listen to the language. They had a baby because they weren't really men. They were women who were considered trans men. But when you hear the report, you know, like that, that, uh, that Chinese ma- man who had a baby, Carry to determine everything. That was a woman. She had a uterus. Um, uh, even the ones who got caught, you know, sometimes when the when the uh, fetus is developing, uh, a woman won't become a. Uh, I mean, a man won't become a full man. He'll be trapped, so he'll he'll still have a uterus, but he'll have like organs. They they used to call them hermaphrodites or whatever. So. There, there's some things that can happen accidentally, but they're still considered a woman at birth, but they become men later. Well, now a flat out man with this procedure in theory could have a uterus implanted into his body. And yes, you are right, big dog. This procedure will be sought after by all the people who consider themselves transgender. So that's why those doctors over at the Cleveland Clinic, yes, over in Ohio, need their fucking skulls bashed in for for trying to bring this type of equality. And between that shit and the shit that I just reported, these assholes with these fucking Harmony androids, sex androids and shit, 
They just trying to do away with women altogether. That just goes to show you how fucking demonic this world is. The, the mother of the universe, the creator of all life, who births everything that's in existence after God, the woman brings it in, into, the, into existence. They want to do away with that shit. Kill all the motherfuckers and start over. Hey, ladies, it's time for To Tell the Truth. Ladies, let's talk about it with Sly on Inside the Cave. I bet that's me. I wasn't paying attention. Go ahead. Fucking host it. Dog, we need help, man. Get the host together. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. What we got? What we got, for Sly? <laughs> the recap, the question from last week, the recap is, ladies, would you take a shit in front of your man? Fellas, you remember when I asked this question last week, right? Yes. And we all was in agreement when we was like, hell no, don't do it. Some things need to be the secret behind closed doors, right? I didn't yeah. participate in that conversation, but okay. Yes, I agree. Well, 100% of the ladies, I'm going to say 98%, all are for taking a dump in front of their man with the door open or and while he's in the washroom with them. And I'm not, I'm not for that. I'm not for that. And I, I just think that some, some of the men just, just say, Fuck it, you know, they ain't gonna win this argument. And the ladies think that that must be love if he can if he can withstand my, my stinky smell. They say that a lot. I, I hear a lot of women say that, like, you know, that that's love. That's that's a good way to lose a man. Like, I understand people wanna be close. No, I understand people wanna be real close to your spouse and your mate and stuff like that, but you know, I just think that there's some things you just want to keep to yourself. And, you know, I, I, I just grew up old school, man. And, you know, what a woman did in the bathroom, that was their business. They didn't open that shit up to everybody. Well, you know, see, see, that's, that's... CB, you're being disingenuous. Because here's the thing. No matter what role you play on this motherfucking show, we know you got wife and kids. You know damn yep. well your kids go in that bathroom when your wife is in there. Almost as soon as she gets the Oh, party. yeah. They do. That, that well, yep, I mean. They do, yes. So when you need something, you ain't going in the bathroom? I don't. I, I, I can wait. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't need to be in there. Well, oh, but what I'm saying no. is, is that no. any woman with kids, that's probably why you had 100% of the women say it's not a big deal. And they even expect their man because they're just so used to not really having that privacy. Even my wife complains about that. Damn, can I go to the bathroom? Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. That's facts. That's facts. And my that kid, is facts, listen, but I don't participate. My kids are teenagers. <laughs> and they don't give her no privacy. Damn. You know what I mean? So I, 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 yeah. I, feel, I feel the women on that one. Listen to Inside the Cave now on iHeartRadio for more thought-provoking ignorance. Listen to the Cleese Report with Ro now on iTunes. Inside the Cave. Here we go. Welcome back Inside the Cave, Inside the Cave podcast. And last year, for everybody who listened to our show, uh, all throughout last year, 2016, our next guest brought us... Probably, uh, oh man, some phenomenal guests for his movie, uh, Not Another Black Movie, which you can see now on Amazon. Go there, Amazon right now, and Amazon.com right now, and you listen, watch Not Another Black Movie by our next guest, my buddy Jay Davis. Jay, 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 man, we got a lot to talk to you about, brother. Since you're in the movie business and uh, <laughs> been doing film forever, uh, with all the latest with this Harvey Weinstein and, and these women taking down men, how has your life been? But when you when you're giving out twenty five dollar gift cards to people, it, it's not as bad as you think. So you know, most women like getting fingered for twenty five dollars. 
at a time. So I just cut them check, them hush money checks. That's about it. Careful, well, careful. <laughs> that's all it takes is the gift card. Let me let me rack up. Because I'm not rich. I don't have a lot of money, so this is the best I can do. I gave one a twenty five dollar uh, gift card to more oink to this one bitch, and she went for it. So I'm like, <laughs> more oink. <laughs> hey, hey, Jay! Now tell tell everybody again where they can uh, check out now another black movie. Now, by by the way, for everybody um, listening, CV and Joe Dirt made cameos in that movie by Jay Davis. Yeah. So uh, check that out. Yeah, another black movie is on Amazon Prime right now. You can watch it with Five Stick on your TV, any smartphone device right now. As of last night. It was at 975,000 minutes stream. It should be at a million a night. Wow. Oh, wow. So it's going great on Amazon Prime. Let's uh, check it out. Another flag move. Right, right. What's up? They're doing all that. Sure. And, you, and you've been bootlegged before, so that's pretty good. I was, I've been bootlegged, and if people try to convince me that I shouldn't be upset, but I'm like, hey. Selling my shit for two hours. That's not cool. <laughs> that is not cool. <laughs> 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 you can't convince me. I should be happy about that. I get it. People like it. I get it. I got. I'm hot in the streets, but I can't buy shit with hot in the street credit. That doesn't. It don't work like that. Correct. I can't call Sprint People and say, "Hey, man, I want to make a payment arrangement with this hot in the street shit credit I got right now." So. <laughs> Hey, for everybody that's listening, I used to be uh, a co-host on the Jay Davis show, and Big Dog used to actually call in or like you know send feedback in uh, during the show. He was like the only person that that I knew that like consistently listened when I was on back. This is back in the day. So uh, now in, in the Jay Davis show, and it's still it's still on. Jay does Jay does it every Saturday, right? You still do it, Jay? Yes, yes, I do every Saturday. Right. And, I, I, and Big Dog, you from Detroit, right? No. I remember. No, Alabama, I, Alabama. No, Alabama, bro. Al- Alabama, Alabama. I'm from Detroit, got fans. That's all. Wait, all what? Right, I used to talk shit about Detroit, and I never went to Detroit. <laughs> and you know what? I went to Detroit for a screening, and every single thing I said was absolutely, it was fucking right. Everything about Detroit <laughs> made me sad. <laughs> Hey, hey, but look, Jay, the thing is, so, the way the way we used to do the show, and I'm sure, and, and by the way, you still, you, ain't nothing changed, because I was there for the, what was that, a 10-year anniversary or a 5-year anniversary? What was that? Oh, uh, shit, 7-year. Seven 7-year seven anniversary, okay. So I was there for the 7-year anniversary, and ain't nothing changed. But look, the way things is, like, for instance, the way it used to be, Jay was a pervert, still is. I'm a married guy that's struggling with being around a sexy co-host and, and all the topless women we had on. Like, that was the, the gimmick of the Jay Davis show when it was me, Jay, and, uh, and Paris. Now, with today's world, right. Jay, can we even, can you even do a show like that anymore? Like, I get heat about it some of the shit not- I say now. It is not fair. Why, why are we so sensitive? We are in a sensitive participant, participation trophy world. Like, why is everybody offended by every fucking thing? <laughs> like, yeah. I, I don't get it. I mean, like, and it's like what, what the Harvey Weinstein. I posted something today. Say, Idris Alba said, hey, baby, your dress is fitting you right. But then, if Harvey Weinstein said it, it's bad. But nobody's going to say shit that Idris Alba said it. So it's not fair. It's not fair. I agree, man. I agree. And I think, like, women are taking this thing too far now. And, and all I'm getting, like, oh, you guys shouldn't objectify women. It's time now. We're going to change the way men do business. There's going to be no more objectifying women. And here's the reason why I really wanted you on, because I know you're witty like this. Objectifying women, uh-huh. objectifying women is the whole base of the American society. Objectifying women is what the economy is built on. I can, we can name so many right. things that if we didn't objectify women, that wouldn't even exist. For instance, 
Hooters. Would Hooters exist if we didn't objectify women? Yeah. Plus, tilt to kill. Tilt to kill. Tilt to kill. Tilt to kill. I'll, give, I'll go any further. I'll go any further. My favorite place to vacation at, Las Vegas. If we didn't objectify women, there would, you want to know what Las Vegas would look like? Go to the old strip where there's like three casinos and there's, like, and there's a bunch of old guys gambling. with, with They don't even have credit cards. They're gambling with, with change. That's what the old strip looked like. When you start objectifying women, you get the five star hotels, you get the you get the the top notch escorts and shit like that. Objectifying women is what America is built on. I mean, seriously, people need to let's stop let's, this let's, shit. Let's be honest. You, you have you have ID a paid press. You put women twerking, taking their ass. Uh, you can't prove no that. One is <laughs> No one is forcing these women to do that. Exactly. It's like no one is forcing people to strip at strip clubs. So these women want to do it. Right. I'm not, that's not, I'm not a bad person because they want to get naked. Yeah, I, I think they're just taking it too far. I think they're trying to have it both. I think they're trying to have have it both ways. And pause. I think they're trying to have it both ways. Pause again. But I think what also this has created, you want to know what, what created Donald Trump supporters? It's shit like this because Trump supporters are, are the ones that feel like they're everything is being taken away from them. And now these women are coming out with these a lot, some of this ridiculous stuff. I heard a woman made a complaint about being sexually uh, attacked by a female host of The Voice because she sl- she spent the night at her house twice. And she didn't want to have sex wow. with her, but she ended up having. She felt like she had to have sex with her. So one minute you tell um, me, one minute you tell me that we're just as strong as men, we can do this just like men, but then this happens. Like you could wait a minute. You spent the night at her house twice and had sex with her. Yeah. Like them, come on, man. Them, it's not like everybody want to be the victim. I mean, like. Where were all these so-called women? Who? Where was the woman that got her pussy grabbed by Donald Trump before he got elected? Why didn't she say nothing? Like right. we could have used that. <laughs> well, man, Roland actually sent me a video. I haven't uploaded this shit yet. <laughs> but this is where all this stuff is based from, Jay. It all started from Donald Trump. If Trump, if yeah. nobody, nobody thought Trump was going to get elected because he said grab him out of pussy. And then he ended up getting. Then America, America realized they elected a pussy grabber, and now everybody's pissed off. (laughs) So now you get all this outlandish shit coming out, man. This this is crazy to me. But and here, and I I talked about this on my show. Now, all these women, they they're saying they're victims. Now, what about the women who benefited from the Harvey Weinstein? Oh my! Like like all of them? Like all (laughs) All of like the women who actually benefited directly from him doing whatever they did with him, they're part of the too, if you want to point fingers because they didn't say shit, and they're not going to say shit. <laughs> right, and, 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 and how are you and how are you uh, um, a, a hero now because you, you, you say shit now when it's convenient? Like, here's the thing. Let me give you an example. What about all the rappers that wanted to be rappers but someone said, hey, you got to sell drugs to be a rapper? What do anybody feel? Do anybody feel they was taken advantage of? Do anybody feel like uh, the, the, the rappers that didn't kill anybody that maybe felt like they if they if they killed somebody they can be more respected in the streets and they can actually make their raps more real? Do anybody feel sorry for those guys? <laughs> like seriously, right. this is this is where we came. This is where we're yeah. at now. <laughs> right. Hey, we're talking with my buddy yeah. Jay Davis, it's man. Just, I want. I wait for like, I know, and I'm, I know Tyler Perry shaking in his boots right now. <laughs> I'm sure he's shaking more down that somebody's not happy about right now. Oh, oh man, uh, no, this shit just this. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, every somebody didn't get chose for a role, and they had to go gargle the mouthwash. That's all I'm saying. Oh. <laughs> 
That's fucked up. Well, you know they say that's how Tyrese got his role for Baby Boy. Uh-oh. Yeah, I remember that. That's Becky Hayes do. <laughs> like, they said it's one of you out of whoever wants to roll got to do such and such. I'm like, damn. <laughs> That's the way it is now. But, I mean, this shit been going on forever. I know Bill Cosby sitting back like I told y'all. I just like, I've been sleeping. What the fuck's the big deal? I like my bitch is well rested when I fuck him. <laughs> so that's the only difference. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Hey, 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 Jay. Nobody said shit about you. You have to. You had bitches on, on, um, on allowance. <laughs> Was that a sexifying women? But nobody He's the originator you, right? of this. He's the originator of all of this. Yes, but now it's the problem. <laughs> right. What you about to say, dog? No, I was gonna tell Jay that he should tell Roland and um Sly. About the cameo you did on his um on one of his movies. Who? The cameo. I did. You know, you know, you know the cameo you did, CP. When when Which you and one? um the one when um you and Jay was at the pool table. Oh no, I seen that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I seen I seen that terrible ass acting. <laughs> hey Jay. No, that wasn't for hey, 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 he look he looked kind of comfortable playing that role, didn't he, Jay? <laughs> hey, the story came from him. Hey, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big film guy, so I, the story didn't bother me. It was that terrible ass acting. So when you need a real actor, <laughs> holla at your boy. <laughs> hey, no, but, well, not to give it away. Hey, what, what, what movie was that? What, 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 um, what, what was that on, Jay? That was the uh, first choke on that. Get choke on series. that. Hey, you got, matter of fact, you bringing that back, you got another choke on that coming out, right? We, uh, yeah, we actually doing a pilot, like a TV show. So it's going to be like the sketch show, Choke on That, the TV series. Yeah, and matter of fact, didn't I just see you like dressed up as LL Cool J? You in another movie or something? That, you, like, no, like yeah, I was in uh, Mark Harris. It's a, uh, a Mark Harris movie. It's, um, it's called Nothing Like Thanksgiving. I play a rapper named Temper Tantrum. <laughs> hey, oh man! Hey man, tell them about your boy Klondike. Klondike, Klondike is, you know what? This this is a fucked up thing. Like Klondike was the first rapper on heroin. That's his whole thing. Now, three years later, every fucking rapper is on some kind of drug. So it doesn't even make sense anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for, so every, for everybody people listening. People like to hear real <laughs> for, for, for everybody listening, Klondike Bars is a character that Jay plays. Is an old ass <laughs> dope <laughs> rapper. God damn, boy! <laughs> you got. Hey, matter of fact, Jay, where can everybody? I'm not. I'm not. Unlike you, Jay, I'm not getting ready to get rid of you. But tell everybody where they can go. Like, see some stuff at, uh, it's, on social uh, media. You can check it. Oh, oh, my, uh, my uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. J. Davis, J. Y. Davis, T. P. Uh, or J. Davis Films. dot com. Like all my sketches and shit on there. But yeah, uh, Clyde did a rapper, Clyde Lake Bars. He was a dope fiend rapper, and now every rapper of fucking that's, hypes now. So, a dope that's, 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 that's crazy. crazy. Isn't that that's amazing, man? I just that that's that's a great point. Like you did as a spoof, and now yeah. everyone is doing it for real. That's a guy's crazy yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, and if I do it now, people gonna be like, "What's so funny? I don't get it." Like he's like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> that's true that is true hey uh, now 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 when when we did the sketch uh i'm not gonna say his name my co-worker uh he told he always used to call me up and say or, t- or tell me and stuff like hey man i just got done fucking this bitch man you should see my dick how i was fucking this bitch man man the sweat was <laughs> dropping all through my ass and, and i'm like i'm like tell me about the pussy man tell me about the Tell me about the girl, man. He said, nah, nah, nah. Hey, yeah, yeah, I'm about to get to that. I'm about to get to that, man. I thought you said you were going to say his name, motherfucker. Did I say his name again? You put that shit all the time, dog. Okay. How many times you just said his name? All right, remind me, to, remind me to edit it. Remind me to edit it, dog. Uh, I'm going to kick your ass. Twice. I'm going to kick your ass twice. But every time he would tell me a sex story, because look, I'm a married man, so I like hearing about sex stories. Because, you know, I get this, hey, that gets me off. I like to hear that kind of shit. 
pause. But the thing pause. is, I, I, hey, but the thing is, you know, if you're gonna tell me the sex story, tell me about her. You know, and like right. I was just saying, because Jay gave me a segment on the show, and I was just saying that Jay thought it was real funny, and he said, "Let's make it make it a sketch." <laughs> so I, that was my first uh, acting <laughs> debut. <laughs> Trying to re re uh I should just record it and saying that shit. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> What'd you say? He doesn't even have uh his social media. He's not even on that shit. I think I did send it to I think I did send it to him though when we first did it because it was on YouTube. But I think I did send it to him. Hey, but Jay, we got the segment, man, uh Sly. He has a uh, a segment on the show where we ask ladies questions. Matter of fact, I added you to um our Facebook group that's getting kind of kinda of crazy. I don't, I don't know if you I don't know if you've seen it. He might not have been in it. I can I get added to all these fucked up groups, man. People think I like that shit, like it was like I got added to like three midget groups. Like, oh, I say, I say, I don't want to look at these bitches on my phone all the time. I'm in three midget groups. I'm in three midget groups, dude. Like they say, I, you can't just be able to add people to groups like that, man. That shit ain't cool. Well, well you added. <laughs> so Jay, you, you told him you had to, Jay, you told him you had to cut back. You had to cut down on the midget shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, if a girl, if a girl go on my page and see I'm in all three of them groups, I can't explain that shit. <laughs> what's, what's the thing with black men? Hey, you know what? Three, I, three midget groups make one whole group, don't it? Don't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> hey, that's a good point. <laughs> Anybody know? I don't know. I don't know, Jay. What's the fetish with midgets? Standing oh, under, a, standing under a ball. Like, <laughs> and they just like they just look different. I don't know if it's like some passive pedophile shit, but they just look. I don't know, man. They just look different. They got some big ass heads. I'm like, damn. <laughs> hey, hey, I got a friend. I got a friend real quick. I got a friend. He he's infatuated with um one of my Facebook friends, uh, um, who's who's a little person, and she's cute. And he's like, man, you need to introduce me to her. And he he's really he really wants her. Wait and, a minute, you you know a midget, uh, Sly? Say what? I said you know a midget. You, you yeah yeah, a I know, yeah, friend? I know, yeah I know yeah I know yeah yeah. On my page, oh, man. I never, you know, I've never seen a midget in real life before. I never seen one. Like yeah. I always seen them like on TV or as an act, or I never seen one in real life. Oh, okay, so they really yeah, do she, exist. That's cool. She, she, she cool. Uh, shit, and bought me a drink before. They like me. I mean, like, <laughs> like shit, shit. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I know a little person. I know a little person. Straight guy, yeah, lady, cool. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, Slide. What's the, what's this week's question of the week that we post in our Facebook group? We'll get uh, Jay's feedback and everybody else's feedback as well. Well, the, the the question is the scenario is it's for the ladies, Jay. You know, most of my questions are geared toward the ladies. They they might be sexual, they might not be. But this question is uh, for the ladies. The question is so, ladies. Your husband dies and you find out his side chick is pregnant. Would you attend the baby shower <laughs> and raise his baby like it's yours? That's the question. That's some, that's some fences type shit. <laughs> yeah, but you gone. <laughs> that, that, that's a, that's Glad a, I'll be gone. A, that's a rough shot of Hennessy to swallow. That's a, damn. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, yeah, you need to know these questions, man. You need to know these answers to these questions. So you can set up your wheel right, man. Get your pension plan set up right, baby. All right, baby. Outside, baby, taking care of. <laughs> hey, hey, speaking of which, uh, Jay, Jay, earlier in the show, um, I gave a, I gave a PSA. Uh, tell me, I want to know what you think about this. I said uh, 2017. Um, I said, all the guys, if you if you got about 15 more days to, uh, before you to get caught up, to get caught up cheating, 
because you cannot bring your cheating ways into 2018 because 2017 is the year of the cheating man and the women are taking back the cheating men. There's no guarantee they're going to take them back in 2018. So I said, if you, this is the year. You got about 15 more days to uh, get caught up cheating. I just want to know what you think about it. <laughs> I mean, I think guys are always going to cheat, but women got to stop acting like dudes, too. Mm. Like, women women think it's cool to just go and just fuck a lot of dudes. And I'm like, like, pussy and dick are two different things. <laughs> like, you, you put mileage on dick. Like, uh, vagina aids like, like fucking bread. <laughs> like, that shit get moldy. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not like why. I, I hate when people be like, my shit is good. I don't care how old I am. I'm like, your shit's not the same as it was when he was 18. So stop lying. You got like two kids and an abortion. Your shit's not the same. I don't give fuck who you are. <laughs> so stop acting like you can just go get ran through and be good. Like, no, it's not the same. You're going to ruin somebody's life. Somebody going to fall in love with you and find out they fucking the Pringles can. <laughs> 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 oh shit. Hey Roland, you might want to give us that disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it, Roland. Don't do it. The ideas of Jay Davis do not reflect the, the host of Inside the Game. <laughs> Jesus. Man. Man. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna never, I ain't gonna never grab a can of Pringles off the shelf again. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Like, hey, so I go do Jay Davis show uh, a few was that a couple months ago. I go do the five year uh, or the seven year anniversary of the Jay Davis show, and once again, Jay puts me in a position. Pause that. I just wasn't expecting or ready for it. I go sit down, and I'm thinking it's just going to be me, Jay, the co-host, and, you know, a couple other guys show up. And next thing you know, all of a sudden, <laughs> this long-legged model comes sit right next to me. And I'm, oh, God. I'm, I'm nervous as a, as, a, as, a, as a white chick on a Harvey Weinstein casting couch. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, this thing is being recorded. And I'm sitting there like, man. So one thing about Jay Davis, if you watch his movies, the, the ladies come out. Sly, women come out for Jay Davis. I'm talking about, I don't know how he finds them. And he gets them naked. Well, he used to give. Can we talk about that still, Jay? Or are you not allowed to talk about that no, anymore? No, no. You gotta tell the story to me, and I want the naked version. <laughs> oh, when we used to do a Jay Davis show, it was a live show every Saturday, and and the, the top the, the tops will come down. The tops will come down. If you, hey, if everybody listening to Inside the Cave want to know where I get my perverted sexual uh, innuendos and ways from, is from starting with this guy. I'm calling in the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I mean, yeah. I want I want to give I want to give two shout outs. One is, is for your wife, CB, because she really loves you to stay with you <laughs> through that shit. <laughs> like yeah. she really yeah. loves you. Like a normal woman would love you. It's hey, but you know. Remember what we used to do? Like when a woman come in there topless, I would uh I would allegedly leave <laughs> leave the leave the booth. Yeah, yeah that's it. She, just, she really cared about it. She cares about you, man. <laughs> that's it. Um, so we had some good times on that, man. Your wife had a show and fucking male strippers was at the show. And dick like hitting on the shoulder and shit like that. You want to be happy? No, it was not. Nothing like that ever happened to me. I just watched it happen to you. <laughs> so but you, you would be you would be okay if male strippers was like half naked in hey, the room with your wife in a tight hey, room with your wife. Hey, brother, who 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 whose side are you on? Whose side are you on over here? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying so you can appreciate. It. Your wife right now. <laughs> She's awesome. I can say that. She's awesome. 
Yo, she put, yo, she puts it with me doing this shit, so she is awesome. I, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> but look, look, Jay, let's get right back to it though. On uh, for not another, okay. black, not another black movie. Uh, for everybody that's listening, 2016, he gave us some great interviews. We interviewed the Black Aunt Bill, uh, Jenny Hubert, uh, Rodney Perry, uh, Damon Williams. Uh, those are all the people. Uh, just, just niche. Hey, am I saying her name right? Niche, Niche, yeah. Just Niche. Hey, she's out this world. She's about to appear on uh, Def Comedy Jam. That's one of those things because you know, I don't, I don't do, I don't know nothing anymore. But like, like that was one. That was like a a, a, a gem you laid on me because I wasn't even expecting that. And then all of a sudden we do the interview. And like, man, I'm like, wow, this chick is out this world. She's big and she's yeah. funny as hell. She's funny as hell. Yeah, she's hilarious. She's so those, hilarious. Those, those are all the people that appeared on uh, a Not Another Black Movie, and we had a chance to have them on Inside the Cave last year, courtesy of uh, my buddy Jay Davis. So once again, yeah. thanks. It was, it was a lot. Y'all could have been that more. It was like we had Ray Lepowski. He was on the Bad Boys Comedy. He was in it. Uh, Joe Blunt was there for a day. Uh, Jay Ivey. <laughs> uh, Leon Rodgers was there. So it was just so many. Every week, it was something fun. Every week. Right. It's a great movie too, man. Make sure now. I'm glad it's, uh, glad people can go check it out uh, on Amazon Prime now too, because it really is a good movie. And you know? everybody that's listening inside the cave, man, you know, go check it out. Uh, leave some feedback. Matter of fact, Jay, I got to do the same thing. I forgot to do. I know you've been telling me. Yeah, you asked Roller, man. I forget to do a lot of shit. Man. I'm so sorry, oh, but I'm about to go. Yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, I got you, man. I got you. <laughs> All right, Jay, you got anything else, yeah. man? Before we get on out of here? Oh, uh, no. I mean, this, uh, we released the first guest and show on that episode. You mentioned it all, like, that was actually, like, people don't even realize it. That was my, we stopped sketching for the first time in, like, two years, like, the last few months. This is, like, two years of I just shoot not one sketch. So these new sketches are, like, nuts. Like, all the old shows on that, all that shit is just, like, completely uncensored. You don't, like, there's, there's something new, something not Ken and Peele, it's just some raw shit. We got a segment yeah. called It's Just Racist, and it's so fucked up. So, you'll see when it's coming out. Is this racist? <laughs> it's just racist. Know, man. It, we touch on a lot, of, a lot of social issues, a lot of shit that's going on right now, and, and people gonna like it. They gonna laugh at, at all of the shit. I'm, it's, like, it's hard to explain, but it's like, damn, like these sketches are dope that we just did. So it's coming out. We're gonna release it beginning of March. And uh Jenny Huber gonna come out. She gonna do like a QA and it's gonna wanna be like a big networking event. So I'll keep y'all posted uh whenever we release it. Oh man, appreciate that. Who all you got in that move? Who all you got in that move, uh in in this sketch? I mean, it's, it's basically some of you know, you the, bring, the you same people crew. Cause it, it's, it's not just the, um, a sketch comedy show. It shows the behind-the-scenes shit, the shit that we go through trying to make sketches. So it's kind of reality show face, and then we show sketches in between. So um, it, it shows, like, a lot of shit that you don't see. And that, it happened to be funny. So, so it's something nice, different, nice, something nice. to do. But uh, I'm in pretty much all of the sketches, mainly. <laughs> So, it's going to be something else. Jay Davis, always working, always working, doing this thing. My man, appreciate you coming on, man. Everybody go check it out, man. And uh, Jay Davis show is uh, uh, Jay Davis show is available every Saturday. Yeah, every Saturday, just go to the jdavisshow.com. Um we're gonna be there this Saturday and we're gonna have fun, man. We go, you need to come back, Stevie, man. We have fun with you there. And I'm um, trying to get you in trouble with your wife. So just uh, come on down. I'll make sure somebody's nipples is out that's a female. <laughs> hey, I don't wanna see no footage of CP with his rubbing his goddamn nipples. Right. <laughs> right. Uh make sure you go to cavecrushshop.com and check out a uh, slash shirt. Um on Cave Crush Shop as well as the Cleaves Report. Uh, check out the Cleaves Report every single week on uh, Android and on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Store. All right. And uh, we'll be back next week with another full show. Once again, shout out to my man Jay Davis uh, coming on and uh, breaking down uh, the rape culture. I hope we did it some justice. I doubt we did. I'm sure we're going to get some feedback on that. <laughs> but, uh, 
Big Dog, go ahead and get us out of here. Hey, man, before I close out, I'm going to shout out to homie Slick Rick. Slick and, Rick. Uh, yeah, man, Slick Rick, man. He don't fuck with us no more, man. What's up with that? Oh, man. Slick, he, he's around. He listens, though. Still <laughs> listen? He still listens, yeah. Hey, Slick Rick, do me a favor. When you see CB slapping one time, fuck me. Don't don't do don't do that. <laughs> don't do that, Slick Rick. Don't do that. <laughs> All right, man. So uh on behalf of the guys at Inside the Cave, we want to thank y'all for tuning in. And we'll catch y'all last next week. Thank you for listening to Inside the Cave. Inside the Cave now brings you the official store to get all things Cave Crush and Inside the Cave at CaveCrushShop.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Cave Crush and like our Facebook page, Cave Crush Shop. Inside the cave. 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 We on the number one show. Inside the cave. Three Lee Films.